Hi guys, it's Grace. Um, welcome back to my channel. So I'm coming at you with a different kind of video today and honestly I don't know how long it's gonna take. I haven't, I've made a plan but I'm just gonna let the Holy Spirit lead me in this video. So I've decided that I'm gonna share my testimony with you and I'm really really excited. I think I was inspired after watching a bit of a video by Jess Conti today on YouTube and I've been wanting to do it for so long but I've been putting it off so what better time than the present to just go for it so I really hope you enjoy it and that it resonates with you and you just learn some important messages from it if you do please give this video a thumbs up and let me know like let me know down below in the comments if you've experienced anything similar if you'd like me to pray with you for that or you can also message me on my Instagram which is grace underscore Oggy, it's private but you can still DM me and I'll see it. And yeah, if you like, subscribe to my channel, but most of all, I just hope you enjoy it. So get comfy because this might be a long video. But let's go. So I have to say, I didn't think my story is the most interesting, but um, I don't know. I'll let you decide that for yourself. So first of all, I've got some notes. <laughs> double-sided so I'll just be looking down if that's if I look down that's why um so I've always grown up in a Christian household where I was raised following God and I've always just had that faith in my life and I'm really really grateful like thinking back now on it because it's made me who I am and I'm really really lucky to have always grown up knowing God and that's something I would definitely want to do um when I move on to having my own family in the future but yeah that's like the foundation to this story I guess so we went to a couple of different churches growing up we went to some local churches and then ended up going to one church in London and me and my siblings didn't really enjoy that church but we never told our parents and when we told them later on they're like why didn't you tell us but um one memory that I have is that we had this youth takeover service at the church and this involved obviously us the youth um, doing the praise and worship and sorry about the siren in the background and doing the preach and just taking over aspects of the service like that so growing up I was quite confident with singing I was a little singer and um, I did put myself forward to go and be part of this choir for the church and they were singing Oh Happy Day by Sister Act 2 which is an absolute banger of a song and um, so yeah I put myself forward to want to sing in it and the lady who was organising it looking back now I don't think it was her being purposely negative but she did say oh you can't sing I don't need to sing and this was because she wanted her daughter to sing but the impact that it had later in life on me um, it just showed me how important the tongue is and how it can have such an impact on people's lives so it's really important what we say and what we put out with our words so I'm just gonna read some verses to you which just show the importance of the tongue Okay, so the first verse is Psalm 34, 13, and I'm just going to be reading from the NIV version. Um, this says, you must not say evil things and you must not tell lies. And then the other verse is Ephesians 4, 29, and that reads, when you talk, do not say harmful things, but say what people need. Words that will help others become stronger then what you say will do good to those who listen to you. And I feel like that really just like stresses the importance of how we need to be so careful with what we say. Because now as I go on, you'll find that it completely knocked my confidence when she said that. And I have memories of going down to the living room whilst my parents are talking and interrupting their conversation and being like I wrote this song about the Bible and I want to sing it for you and I'd sing it to them 
and in year three I remember auditioning with my friends for this high school musical play and I really just put myself out there but I after this experience I couldn't do that all confidence had completely gone so looking back I can remember two examples so in year six I was on the field with my best friend from primary school at the time and um, we were singing over the rainbow the like musical classical song and I can sing it in front of her and she was like why do you sound like you're crying like why and I was like <laughs> I'm literally trying so hard I just I just can't like I don't know what happened my voice just went shaky I can like I can't even sing for my family without having to turn around because I was just so scared to sing in front of them and the other example I have was four years later four years later when I was in year 10 I was they had this um musical concert going on in our school and I thought I'd give it a try and audition because I still loved singing I just couldn't sing in front of people and I tried to sing the song Clown by Emily Sanday in front of my friend and again couldn't sing in front of her had to face um the back and try and sing in front of her so for example let me just I'll be like I'll be a clown um, I don't know if that's a very good example, but I just couldn't do it like facing people like and it's really really sad thinking back that I was able that I that uh, I can't speak that that happened and it also affected my general confidence in life. I became really really shy and reserved. And I'm usually quite a bubbly person, but yeah, I'm thankful to my mum because she never stopped praying for me time after time after time to just regain my confidence back and for the stage for it to go. Yeah, I'm getting a bit emotional thinking about it, so yeah, I'm just thankful, like thankful to God looking back now, yeah. So I obviously put myself out for this music concert and I ended up trying to back out so I got a slip at school one day and they were like if you still want to do it the music concert auditions are tonight after school and I remember thinking I don't know and like fortunately now thinking back that worked out perfectly my mum was working from home that day and um, I don't like usually if she's working then there's no way I can stay for stuff after school because there's only one school bus and I'd have to catch that home. If not, I'd have to walk to town and get the bus and it was just very long with where my school was. So she was actually at home that day and I remember ringing her and being like, should I go for it? And she said, yes. And um, so then I just stayed behind after school. And um, yeah, so went for it. So I was watching all these different um, kids in my school audition and they're all doing amazing. I remember one of my good friends was auditioning and she sounded amazing and then it was my turn and I just felt that crippling fear like enter my body again and I didn't want to do it and I was like slumping my chair thinking I don't want to do this, do I really really have to do this? But I got on the stage anyway and as soon as I got on the stage, the fear disappeared. It absolutely went, and I, I don't know what happened. So I sang the song Indescribable by Chris Tomlin, but I sang the Kira Shard version. And this is why this song holds such a special place in my heart. And yeah, I just remember singing it and it being done, and the fear, like, I felt so happy afterwards like it'd gone and I remember my media teacher was literally just working away on his laptop and as he heard me he opened his eyes shocked thinking this girl who I teach who's like probably a quite shy girl can't believe she's singing and yeah that was a pivotal moment for me and yeah I'm just so happy looking back it was just and it's one thing that I feel now, like, that peace just overcame me. And I definitely feel that was God and the Holy Spirit with me. 
at that point in time. So time goes on and this music concert rolls around and I end up singing Indescribable in front of teachers, parents and staff and and it was just an incredible moment. I, I do remember um, people being like, how are you going to sing by yourself? Aren't you scared? And I was like, yeah, I am. But it literally was God who just enabled me to do that. And I remember it being done and having to like walk down the middle of the walkway to join the other students at the back. And my mum, even though everyone was like clapping, she stood up and was clapping and she has just always been so so supportive of me like throughout and that literally like that was so special to me and another thing was that my sister my older sister she said to me if this was a year ago there was no way you would have been able to do that and she was right like I had no confidence in myself at all and the fact that God helped me do something like that was just incredible yeah and yeah I absolutely loved every second mo every single moment of it and I'm just so glad that I was able to sing a worship song and talk about how God is great and how his creation just shows his greatness and that other people were able to hear that and that it wasn't just a normal song I was able to shine the light of Jesus for those three minutes that I sang that song so at this music concert there was actually one lady from my church there who was my youth leader as her daughter was also performing in the music concert so she gave me a big hug afterwards and she actually invited me to sing indescribable on mother's day at my church and also side note the guy who played guitar for me for indescribable he actually ended up being a Christian and going to church as well. He didn't go to the same church as me, but he went to church in the same town. And I just found that like crazy how the two of us were paired together and we both ended up being like Christians. I was like, that's really cool. So he accompanied me on Mother's Day and we sang Indescribable in front of the church. And again, that was incredible and I'm thankful for, to God for the opportunity for that and it kind of is the start of where this journey took off so after that I was kind of what is going on I was kind of made aware of worship leading and it wasn't something that I knew very much about prior to because at my church we just had a band who played um, every week so that we didn't have really a specific designated worship leader it was just the band playing together and we'd just sing worship so I started finding out about that and it was something I was like mm, mm, I don't know if that's for me I still struggled with my confidence I definitely improved but I still wasn't there I'm still not there now but um it's something that became more apparent to me and I was invited to lead worship for the new youth takeover service at my new church and that was a much more positive experience and it really gave me an insight into worship leading and I really really enjoyed it and something that in comparison to singing in front of people I feel terrified and nervous whereas worship leading I feel complete peace and confidence in God. So I felt God kind of calling me towards worship leading and I was very much resisting it. But then there was one day I was watching these, um, this video on YouTube and it was a Rend Collective worshipping. It was like loads of different live performances. And I felt God saying, I want you to share the love you have for me with others, like in the videos you saw earlier. And that's been a word that stuck with me and kind of how this channel has come out from and worship leading and evangelism, I guess. So one of the biggest aims for this channel for me is just to, I want people to know the love I have for God and to experience it themselves. That is something I pray for a lot. I'd love if people just 
know even a glimpse of his love because it's just incredible um yeah and on another side note so growing up i went to soul survivor at the summertime for their festivals and there was i can't remember if it was 2015 or 2016 there i it was like the year when i was deciding what i'm going to be doing am i going to go do a gap year am i going to go to university i always wanted to study physiotherapy but with it was just very unlikely with my grades that i could get in so i felt like maybe i should do a gap year and um i felt like i think it was three different occasions over the space of that week god confirmed it to me so like the first night i was obviously really really worrying about it and they everyone they have a time of response at the end of each service and the response time was for people who are worrying about a situation and i was like great and <laughs> i'm not the sort of person who likes to go out and get prayed for but i went forward and got prayed for absolutely bawling my eyes out like i just couldn't control it i knew that wasn't me that was the holy spirit and i was prayed for and encouraged with the poem footsteps and then another time um got like there was a response time for people who felt called into worship being a worship leader they even like just cancelled the sermon just so they can pray for people so it was just like god really making it clear to me that um week yeah i don't know why i still resisted it i was like i still don't want to do it i like was resisting <laughs> which is really silly thinking back now but at the time i just didn't want to do it so i'm gonna skip forward a bit so now we're going to go into university because obviously I wasn't sure if I was going to go and do uni or go and do the gap year. I was going to be funded by my church to do the Soul 61 gap year but then we got a new pastor and it was, it became a bit difficult and I just decided maybe it's a sign and I was like maybe I should just go to uni. So I ended up studying at uni and didn't get the grades for physiotherapy so I decided to do sports science they offered me that instead and I thought I'll go and do that and I'll do a masters in physiotherapy afterwards so that was all good I moved to a new town made new friends I found a church that I really loved and I still go there now and really really like it um I joined the Christian Union at my uni but all that time my mental health went <laughs> down the drain I really struggled with my mental health a lot last year I just felt down a lot of the time and isolated myself and yeah it wasn't a great time it wasn't a great year of my life and I just really didn't enjoy my course because I just knew that there's like people who I was friends with who were doing physio and I just I really wanted to do that. I just didn't want to do sports science for three years. But no discredit to the course because it was actually a really good, interesting course and there's aspects of it that I miss now, like the physiology labs. But it wasn't for me. So there was one day when me and my friend were walking to the library and we saw the physio students and literally that was the point where we were like, you know what, we need to just go for it. So we both rang our mums and we were like, we're going to apply for physio and we're just going to go for it. Rather than waiting three years, let's just go for it and reapply and maybe do first year again. So that's what we did. And we both got offers for interviews, which blew my mind. I didn't think I'd get one, but we had our interviews. Interviews went well. And I remember just constantly being in my room, praying 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 over this sticky note which had the date of my interview that would go well and yeah and if you want like a um video about the process of applying for physiotherapy and stuff like that i'll do that for those physio students who watch me and yeah so i got an offer my friend got an offer as well 
hers was unconditional and I was really really happy for her mine was only conditional and it was to get 65% in my sports science first year and I was like great because semester one was already done and I had done all four of my exams I wasn't enjoying it and I knew I'd had I'd have to work really really hard in semester two to even get anywhere near that 65% I knew it was going to be a challenge but I know that nothing's impossible with God yeah so long story short I didn't end up getting the grades I did a lot better in semester two but it still wasn't good enough I ended up oh, I can't remember I think I got like 54% which was nowhere near um, the entry requirements so I was kind of just waitlisted and had to just wait and see when it comes to clearing if I got onto the course and I know from previous years my uni doesn't go into clearing so I was really really nervous but on results day after going through different um, people so first the people who do the clearing hotlines then an admissions tutor and then a lecturer I finally found out I got onto the course and I couldn't believe it because I didn't get the grades not anywhere near and I know that I wouldn't be in this position if it wasn't for God and the power of prayers I remember going downstairs to my mum and my brother and crying oh, I got onto physiotherapy and it's what I'd wanted for so long and it really really taught me that God's timing is perfect he didn't want me on the course last year and I'm really grateful because I've made wonderful friends this year and the course structure has changed this year and I feel like I would have probably struggled with the course structure last year so I'm really really grateful for that and being in first year again it, it's meant that it's just opened my eyes to a lot I've yeah my mental health is so much better this year like I do get stressed with exams but I feel like I deal with it a lot better and I'm just not in the dark place that I was last year and I've built beautiful friendships with people this year who I wouldn't have imagined that I would have but I really really love them all and I'm just so grateful for the journey God has taken me on. So now to present day I'm a lot happier, I'm a lot more confident in who I am and my identity in Christ that's not to say I'm like yes I'm so confident I'm not but I just feel like I've got my bubbly self back again and yeah I just feel I just have so much joy in Christ and I'm thankful for the journey he's bringing me along um I'm putting myself more out there with worship leading. I did lead worship at a church service a while ago, but I'm going to obviously be doing more of that. And I um, finished my first year of physio, going to second year by God's grace in September. And I'm really, really enjoying that as well. Um, some other things to say as well. I went to this conference with my home church over Easter, and that was really awesome got the chance to evangelize to people in another part of England and that was really fun and it's helping me grow more and more and more and I feel like my friends I feel like I don't know if I've already said this but um the friends that I've developed this second first year have really helped me discover a heart for evangelism that I have because there was some points when the weather was getting good they'll be like we're going to the park just to talk to people about Jesus and seeing them do that really inspired me and I've it's something I really want to do more of through this channel and to people in person and I just need to get over the fear because at the end of the day we're God's vessels and we should just not let our fear stop us from sharing the good news with others um, there was also another notable experience as well. I was in Brighton with two of my friends after church service and we were just going around like talking to people and just seeing their faith in action really inspired me. So we saw this homeless woman outside Sainsbury's and she was missing a finger and 
they prayed for her there and then for her finger to grow back and to me that was like wow like I would have never done something like that back then but the finger didn't grow back there and then but the faith that they had to just do that really inspired me and this lady was saying that she'd felt tingling in her finger that she never felt before and it was just overwhelming and that it made her believe that there might be something that did cause that like that the Holy Spirit was in work there so yeah I'm just thankful for them and my life group at uni we covered this se series called the basics by Francis Chan and those videos are hard hitting I'm gonna stick it in the um, description box so you can check them out but they've really changed my out view on like outlook on the church and really inspired me to step up basically um what else can I add I just feel like I'm growing more and more of my relationship with God something I've always struggled with is reading the Bible I'm not amazing at that but I'm trying to do more about that reading more books about things like the Holy Spirit reading like daily devotionals and yeah, I'm really, really enjoying it and just spending more time in God's presence. It's so refreshing and just such a wonderful, beautiful thing to do. And um, we've also been at our life group, we've been focusing on doing more prophecy and using the gifts of the spirit. And that's been really, really cool to like hear from God more. And I'm going to share a word that I got from a friend last night. So he sent me that he had this image of an outdoor archway that looked Middle Eastern, like it was from Jerusalem or something. And there was a light shining down it. As it went further down, it started to get narrow and narrower, also to the point that I had to start ducking to get through. Just to give you a bit of context, this was for me. So he got my name on a piece of paper, prayed for me, and then opened it. So he didn't know it was me when he was praying for me, but then, yeah, he sent me this afterwards. And that there was a couple of scriptures that came to head. Um, Matthew 7.13, John 10.9. He had a sense that God's happy and proud of me and knows that I see this entrance and he wants me to follow him through this gate. And it felt like the gate Jesus would have walked through and it's like mirroring his walk. And he got the word refine, like God wants to refine me more and take him down, take me down a path more and more like him so i really need to study his word keep his commands and follow his footsteps footsteps on the way to being refined so i feel like that's big and um kind of my next exciting thing to start looking at um yeah so that's kind of the end of this video I also just want to throw in a special mention to my mum. She really, really never stopped praying. I have like an image of my head by us like kneeling down on the floor in the living room and her praying for God to anoint me, anoint my voice, to give me confidence back. And it, the power of praise is so, so, so powerful. And I really want to make a video of on prayer so stay tuned for that but I really just want the takeaway message from this to just be it's really important to be careful of our tongues and what we say and what we throw out there because it can hold so much power use your words to edify people to be positive and to just lift people up and bless and bring blessings into their lives and um, yeah prayer is so important because God can do these things if we ask him and just have faith in him trust in his timing because his timing is perfect and just lean on his understanding and not our own so yeah I really hope you enjoyed this video and that it's helped you I don't know how long it's gonna be but I'm still on this journey and I'm thankful for where God has brought me and I'd love 
if you want to share your testimonies with me if you've got them on video send me the link or message me or email me I think it's in my about section but yeah thank you so so much for watching I hope you enjoyed this video I know it's a bit different but stay tuned for that video about prayers and yeah I'll see you guys next time bye